Joining us now on the line is our good friend Lanny Davis. Now, Lanny, of course, was a White House counsel back during the Clinton days. But I didn't know this. You actually served in an advisory capacity during the Bush years when it came to national security issues. Did you not? Uh, yes, it was a creation of the 9-11 Commission, and Congress enacted a civilian five-member oversight group to review anti-terrorist programs at the highest classified level in the U.S. government from the standpoint of privacy and civil liberties, and we were finally given access to the terrorist surveillance program, which is the foundation of all that uh, you're now looking at that's controversial. All right, so having that base knowledge, as you look at this case involving Edward Snowden, we have been asking the question, is he a hero from revealing the excesses of government, or is he a zero for revealing the the very sensitive uh, secret programs that keep us safe? Well, he can't be described uh, fairly, at least in my opinion, it's just an opinion, as a hero. Well, you know, some people are. Uh, if, if, if he doesn't believe in democracy and the rule of law, which he clearly does not, if he believed in democracy and the rule of law, he would have exercised all of his rights as a American citizen, even if he's working uh, for a particular organization, with access and is troubled by what he's seeing. He could have gone to the inspector general of the agency. He could have gone to Senator Biden. He could have gone to a number of different people to express his concerns. But going to China, revealing these very highly sensitive programs that I think have prevented 9-11s, in fact, I know they have prevented terrorist incidents based upon my experience on the civilian board that I served on, he uh, chose to go to China and then proclaimed his belief in privacy rights and civil liberties with the, uh, with the comfortable arms of the Chinese government surrounding him. So I don't regard that as heroic at all. I regard that as hypocritical. All right. Well, if he went to Australia instead, would you have a different opinion? If he went to the United States or any system uh, where he's not trying to hide and uh, behind an extradition treaty, but he should have come to the United States uh, in the democratic rule of law institutions that we have right now, this program is lawful. A whistleblower is blowing a whistle on illegality, on fraud. That's what the whistleblower statute is about. This program is lawful. It has been held lawful by a court of law. The Congress of the United States has regarded it as a, past a, a, a law. If he doesn't like it, then he can get the law passed by knocking on doors and electing people who agree with him. Right. His problem is that nobody agrees with him sufficient to change the law, so he pronounces what the law is. Again, the irony is he goes to China and he talks about privacy rights. All right, uh, Lenny Davis, let's, let's pivot from Snowden and let's talk about the, the program itself. As we said, you yeah. were there. You got to witness this as part of President Bush's Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board back in 2005. And uh, I guess the question here is, and, and, and please correct me if I'm mischaracterizing this program, but it, it, my understanding is the government is collecting a whole lot of information and storing it. They say they're not looking at it. They're just collecting and storing this information. And then once they have a lead, once they have a suspect or, 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 or a potential lead that they want to follow, they get a warrant from the secret FISA courts court to go back to that information and start looking at some specific uh, aspects of it. Is that, am I characterizing it basically in, in layman's terms? Yes, and I wish that the administration would be as specific as you just were about the facts here rather than the scare uh, words that we hear from Snowden. Number one, no American conversations can be listened in on without a warrant. So the Fourth Amendment is still protecting all of us. Number two, it's metadata. It's not content. So you can't look at the email traffic. You can't listen in on telephone conversations. They are looking at the um, embedded data to look for patterns, and those patterns allow them to prevent at least one major terrorist incident involving New York subways and potentially many others. Okay. And that's going to come out in the next several days. So, yes, the answer to your question is that the Fourth Amendment is protected Meaning, if they're going to listen in on conversations, they have to get a warrant. All right, Lanny, the, the, the problem here is that the revelation of this program comes one week after we learn that low-level bureaucrats at the IRS in Cincinnati illegally disclosed donor information for a conservative political group and disclosed it to a liberal political group. They took it upon themselves to break the law, and they violated that group's privacy for political purposes. Don't you see people's concerns about this vast, vast 
storage of information and how it could potentially be used. Absolutely. Look, we founded this country on skepticism of government. And you know, I'm a liberal Democrat. I believe in government. Our founders created checks and balances because they didn't trust government. When the IRS has this kind of a rogue operation, and I have said from day one, this is a very, very serious violation by the IRS employees. I don't know how high it goes, but I want a full investigation. But the checks and balances that I saw when I was exposed to this program in real time, watching people uh, implementing it. I actually ended up being more trepidatious that there were too many checks and balances so mm-hmm. that we might not catch another 9-11 than when I first went in worrying about privacy rights, which I've been an advocate for for many, many years. So I think the American people should be assured that the people conducting this program are just like us. They have families. Many of them are liberal Democrats. They came up to me while I was in the chambers watching these programs and and actually complimented uh, President Clinton uh, and uh, my background as a Democrat, some of them. So these are people just like us. They're so worried about infringing on privacy rights that they stop and they go check and they get permission. They shut down. It's called minimization. So there's a great conservative ethic inside this agency that everybody talks Why? about they, that Snowden denounces as if they're enemies. They are Americans like us. They have families like us. They're worried about privacy rights like us. And they should be skeptical of government. The American people, but the IRS, just as you said, should be skeptical. But we have something called the rule of law and checks and balances. And I think that we All should right. be assured, as Mr. Clapper has pointed out, that when an incident occurs, everybody wants to know, why didn't you catch them? When we have these types of programs that are so careful about our privacy rights, we have to scrutinize them. They need oversight. I think Wyden and Udall have some good ideas to improve the oversight, but this is a valuable program that protects all of us. we got to leave it right there, Lanny. Thank you so much. Thank you.